So, you're a British car nut and you've decided that you want to get into the hobby. There's a few things that you're going to need. Now, you can either have a giant wallet or a very thick checkbook ready to pay other people, or if you're like me and you want to DIY a lot of what you're doing on your car, you're going to need some tools. So let's take a look at the Midwest Motoring Tool Chest and see what we've got. Now I want to make it clear, this is kind of a rabbit hole, and you can end up with things like your own distributor tester, your very own uh, tire changing and balancing machines, but you don't really need that stuff. For starters, you're going to need a work area. You want to make sure that you've got a solid workbench with space for whatever it is that you're going to be working on. Make sure that you've got a nice vise, and that there's storage for stuff nearby that you're going to be using. An air compressor is not strictly necessary, but you're going to want something that at least to be able to fill tires, and it gives you the option to use some air tools as well. Okay, the main part of what you're going to need, of course, is your socket set. Uh, you're going to want quarter inch all the way through half inch sizes, and you're going to want to make sure that you've got some deep wells and some shallow sockets, and also uh, make sure that you've got, these are SAE, um, for pretty much every Triumph that I've ever owned, and the MGs as well, uh, it's going to be standard sizes, not metric. So make sure you're, you're aware of what's on your car by the correct set. Now, I've got both because obviously I work on a variety of different things. There's some specialty tools. This is for an, uh, it's an oil filter wrench for a Jag. Uh, this is a special wrench for an Austin Healey. Uh, but generally speaking, you can get by with your ordinary socket set. Go to the hardware store, pick one up. It'll at least get you started. You could replace it later. While we're in the socket drawer here, you want to make sure that you've got uh, some torque wrenches. You can usually get by with just a bigger one for torquing the lugs on, on your wheels, uh, for your rotating tires or what have you. Uh, it's generally going to be good enough, but if you start getting into engine work, uh, you want to have a variety of different torque ranges that you could use. You want to have some ratchets. I like the ones with articulating heads uh, because then you can, you can reach around things easier. Uh, something I didn't know existed right away the T-handle ones. Uh, really cool. It lets you kind of spin things down. Uh, you know, I guess I've mostly replaced that with my power tools, but that's okay. You can, you can get started with a set like this. You can work on your car. You also want to have an equally good set of wrenches. Uh, wrenches can go from very cheap to very expensive. You don't need a super expensive set. I have some snap-on stuff. I've got a, a set of Mac wrenches that I keep in the house, but honestly, you really are fine with just Craftsman stuff or whatever they sell at Home Depot. I mean, it's probably going to be fine. You're, you're not going to be really stressing these unless you're working on them all the time. Uh, actually, a quick note, these are the Craftsman V-Series wrenches, and I, I do really like them. Uh, I, I guess I haven't officially reviewed them. The one issue that I have with these is that you have to buy them in the set. And so this goes from quarter inch to, what is it, 15 sixteenths. There is no one inch wrench for the Craftsman V-Series. And you can't buy an individual one. You lose it and now you're out the, the rest of the set. Um, so I like the wrenches. I'm glad I bought them, but yeah, I don't know, the, the different brand depending on what you're looking for. If you're like me and you're a nut and you want all your tools to match, well, then you're stuck. But Anyway, uh, so those are some options there, but get a good set of wrenches. A socket's not going to fit on everything. Now, you'll also want to have a set of ratcheting wrenches because, again, there are going to be times that your socket just isn't going to have as easy access, sometimes uh, just being more in a, a straight line so that you're not offset like a ratchet would be. You can get a little bit more leverage on things. They generally work better. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you've got the infamous any 16th wrench, uh, which will fit anything that you don't happen to have a tool for. Uh, squeaky tennis balls, uh, definitely a must if you've got a border collie helping you work on your cars. If you're going to be working on old British cars, an absolute must is a timing light. Uh, yes, you can kind of set ta uh, you can kind of set timing with a vacuum gauge. Uh, look for the highest vacuum. I've heard all that. You can't check the advance with it. And and if your advance and your distributor's not working, this is really the only way you're going to be able to know that. Um, if you wanted to add to that some other kind of cool tools that you could have, uh, vacuum gauge, you can use that to test. Uh, vacuum and various things, make sure that it's holding. This works great for distributor advanced capsules. You don't need it, but again, it's kind of a neat tool. 
uh, a dwell meter. Dwell meter is a great way uh, that you can test and make sure that your points are operating. Uh, this also doubles as the tachometer, and so you can use that. Uh, you want to have, if you've got Zenith Stromberg carbs, you're going to need one of these adjustment tools. has to be like this. You can use an Allen key, but it's not going to hold the piston in place. And so if you're turning the needle and it turns the air valve with it, you could tear the diaphragm. So that's why this tool has a little notch in it, uh, so that it can hold that in place while you rotate it. And then, of course, if you've got a multiple carb setup, you're going to want a unison or uh, some similar gauge that's going to help you balance the carbs. Uh, very useful thing to have. Going further, uh, depending on how in-depth you want to get, I've got a compression gauge in there so I can do compression tests on my engine. Um, oh, what else have I got in here? Um, you know, this is for assembling an engine. Again, you don't need a lot of this stuff just for pure maintenance purposes, but if you're doing engine building, now it's a, a whole different can of worms that you're going to want to introduce. Moving on to electrical things then, you are absolutely, absolutely going to need a multimeter. Uh, a test light will work well. I love my test light. I keep one in all the cars, but the multimeter is going to be able to tell you the voltage on things. It's also going to be able to tell uh, whether a circuit is open or closed when the battery is not even connected, and so you can check that out. Uh, you know, some wire strippers. You need electrical tape, obviously. Uh, depending on whether or not you are getting into replacing bullet terminals on, on an original wiring harness, you may need a tool like this. It's a special crimper tool, but again, to get started, you don't really need that. Uh, I also can't tell you how many times I've broken a light bulb trying to replace a bulb behind one of the gauges. So I do like this because it kind of reaches in, you can get a better grip on it. And then if you break the glass, it doesn't go through your thumb. Definitely not necessary, but you can start getting into power tools. Uh, like uh, I have Milwaukee stuff, but there's other brands that are just as good. That's a power ratchet. Uh, you could either have a set of air tools or you could use these. Uh, you can get uh, impact wrenches. It's a quarter inch impact. I've got I've got a, a decent drill, uh, and then of course it also has uh, impact guns that you can use. So uh, you want to have a set of those. It's just a great replacement for air tools. Not necessary, but nice to have. If you're doing any interior work then, uh, you're going to want to have some of these. That can help to pull clips. Uh, they make plastic ones that are going to be more friendly depending on what it is that you're pulling apart. Uh, so that's useful to have. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Oh, punches. I use these all the time. Uh, again, some of this stuff you can buy as you go along. I wouldn't necessarily say that you need this to start, but the more you get into it, the more you're going to want to pick up a set of these. Uh, you'll notice that some of these are steel, and that is for things that you don't care about really breaking or that you're not worried about. Some of these are brass, and if you're doing transmission work and you're trying to move pieces back and forth without damaging it, uh, that's the sort of tool that you need. This is an impact driver really cool tool to have. Uh, this works really well for brake drums. Have that uh, screw that holds it in place and what you do is you put in the bit in here, whack it with a hammer and you get uh, a force that is applied to it and it will twist it um, and also grip it a lot better than you're going to be able to do with a traditional screwdriver. Oftentimes it breaks it free and that's going to help you to get things, help you to get screws out without stripping them. Uh, Allen keys. Helpful to have a set of Allen keys. I don't see too many of these on Triumphs, so it's, it's not strictly necessary. Uh, there are some spots where you're going to have rivets, and so a rivet gun uh, will help. Again, I wouldn't call any of this super necessary off the bat. Uh, these are tools for uh, some of the, the bezels on the dashboard. Otherwise, you don't really need it. A lot of these tools are things that I've made. So this is a bolt, and I, I cut a slot in it. Uh, forgetting what I needed this for. Fuel pump maybe? Oh, I remember. This is for taking apart the pump on an overdrive because uh, you need a special tool to be able to get that out. So that's to help with that. It is useful to have a bunch of drill bits. Uh, you can keep them organized a little bit better than this, but I tend to go through a lot of them. Uh, tap and die set. 
You want to make sure that you've got one of those as you're taking bolts out. You're going to want to re-thread things. Technically, re-threaders are different than tap and die sets. Um, they're similar enough, and these are the ones that are going to be easy to find. Uh, make sure that you have either standard or metric or fine thread, whatever your car has. Uh, most of the British cars that I've had are national fine, and so you want to make sure that you've got the correct set and a variety of sizes. Uh, absolutely imperative, you need to have a set of feeler gauges uh, with a range of different sizes. These are going to be good for setting rocker clearances, spark plug gaps. Uh, it's going to be useful if you're still running points, you're absolutely going to need it. It's 15 thousandths, will work there. Uh, you want to have that. Some rulers, of course. It's a lovely crunching noise. Anyway. Um, you could have some cheaper ones like this you pick up that's for gapping spark plugs depending on how in-depth you're getting some dial indicators sort of stuff you need some measuring tools but the only thing in this drawer that you really have to have starting out is going to be your feeler gauges you absolutely need that then maybe a ruler would be kind of helpful uh, but then you can kind of go uh, down the proverbial rabbit hole what else have i got love this tool this is uh, for pulling coolant hoses and it's a, a hook. I picked this up I think in an auto zone. If you have ever tried to remove a coolant hose from a, a water pump just by twisting it by hand uh, you will basically end up with very dry hands and tear the skin up and it's just not comfortable. Uh, this you would hook in around the between the hose and whatever it is that you're trying to remove it and then just move it around and it will break the hose free, twists right off. So love this tool, they're not very expensive. Um, you don't need it, again, you can get by without it, cool to have. Uh, same thing with a set of files. Uh, I've got a Dremel and these are some pieces that I use for kind of sanding down. If you've got bad contact somewhere, uh, you can use that. It doesn't have to be a Dremel, uh, the one I have is in Milwaukee so I can use the same batteries, but you get the idea. This is, yeah, it's a junk drawer. So probably most of the stuff you already have, uh, super glue, razor blade, that kind of stuff, you're gonna need it. This is more of a diagnostic drawer, just a hodgepodge of different stuff. Um, let's see, infrared thermometer, uh, that's helpful. If you're not sure whether or not you should trust your temperature gauge, this is a great thing. Just point it at the top hose near the thermostat and that's going to help to tell you what the temperature of your coolant is. Make sure the gauge is reading correctly. Um, yeah, a mirror, a little mirror that you can stick around the side of things. You can kind of get a better view of what you're looking at. Sometimes that's helpful to identify things. Oh, here we go. This is for brakes. It will help you so that you can get the pads separated uh, if you're replacing brake pads. Again, not under the category of stuff that you need to get started. Probably none of this really is. Uh, gasket material. Uh, if you're replacing a gasket, you can cut one out. 90% of the time, you don't actually need to, to buy the specific one that's already cut. Um, let's see, not too much else in there. What else do we have? Screwdrivers. You need a set of screwdrivers and a very, very important note. I hate it when my wife moves stuff and doesn't put it back. Anyway, very important note is that these are PositDrive screwdrivers. And there's a big difference between Phillips head and PositDrive. And you can turn a PositDrive screw with a Phillips head screwdriver, but you shouldn't because eventually you're going to strip the head of that screw and you're not going to be able to turn it anymore. Now, this PositDrive is a little bit different. You can recognize it because it looks like a Phillips with an extra X um, and that's going to be stamped into the screw head. Now, you should have Phillips head screwdrivers just because you're going to use them for other things, but uh, not on the Triumphs that I have. A uh, decent set of flathead screwdrivers, that's necessary. Uh, the Posa Drive sets, you can buy individual ones. Uh, PZ2 is the one that you're going to use most, most commonly. I have an entire set of bits that I found on the internet, which is where you can buy basically everything. And uh, you can use that with a screwdriver that's got a, a bit holder. Uh, let's see, a variety of those though. Pliers. Pliers are something that I've started buying better pliers. Uh, I have this old craftsman set my dad gave me. I still love these things. I use it all the time. But eventually pliers just start to bend and wear out a bit. Uh, I've started buying these 
uh, German pliers and, and so far I love them. They are fantastic. They're good quality. They hold on to things really well and they don't really bend. Uh, but have a selection of those wire cutters, um, especially if you're doing uh, work on smaller wiring. You want to have some of the smaller ones. Sometimes it's just handy. Uh, pliers, screwdrivers, necessary. Uh, most of the rest of this stuff, not so much. These are tin snips. Uh, again, unless you're doing body work, you don't really need those. Um, these are for snap rings. You can buy snap ring pliers. These just came from Home Depot. I rarely use them, but if I'm doing engine work or transmission work, obviously I do. Hammers. Uh, you definitely need these. Um, especially the ones I use most often are going to be a good ball peen hammer and probably a dead blow. And if I am not afraid of damaging something, use a ball peen or a sledge if you, if you need one. Uh, dead blow hammer, 90% of the time, that's what I reach for. Uh, a couple of rubber mallets, but if, you, if it's down to a couple of hammers, get these two. And that's really the basics. I mean, you can get things. I've got my power supply. You, know, you can have 12 volts that you can apply to things. You could also use a car battery and some wires. Uh, you don't need most of the stuff that I have. I would say the basics are going to be the sockets, the screwdrivers, the wrenches, the pliers. And if you have those, you can do, a, oh, and I guess the hammers. If you have those, you can do a lot of things to your car. When you start getting into the tune-up tools, if you're doing your own tune-up work, you need a set of feeler gauges. You uh, could benefit from a dwell meter. You need the timing light. You need to have the multimeter, voltmeter, uh, whatever you want to call it uh, but those are kind of the bare minimum if you are working on your car that multimeter is as useful as a set of screwdrivers you just have to have it um, outside of that it's consumables you need stuff like brake clean carburetor cleaner um, you just want to have the basics uh, you know engine oil uh, for topping up the dash pots so I, I've got around here ah, yeah uh, just one of these so you can buy from a hardware store, uh, fill it with engine oil. You can use it for a multitude of different things. Um, it doesn't have to be new either, so a lot of this stuff you can get used. Dwell meters you can find, well they're actually not that expensive new, but you can find dwell meter timing light sets uh, just on Facebook Marketplace and you pick up whatever you need there. Um, so you can get, again, you can go down the rabbit hole with this. You can get uh, drill presses, you can get uh, saw, actually saw is all probably a useful tool anyway, you should have one, but um, we've covered the basics on it, but start with those. Get good tools that are reliable, make sure you've got a set that fits the right sizes for your car, and then grow your set from there. On the bench you need to have a good vise, uh, you need to have good lighting in the shop, uh, so a set of flashlights is a very useful thing to have. Uh, make sure you've got shop rags, uh, and of course don't just throw out oily shop rags. It's not quite as important as like if you're doing woodworking and you get varnish on them, but oil can still combust, so make sure that you throw them out. Uh, don't, don't just throw a heap of oily rags in a place that, that creates a fire hazard. Um, but yeah, guys, that's basically what I have in my shop. Uh, it's the basics that I started with, and then you know you get the four-post lift after that when your wife finally tells you you can. Um, but that's it. So like, comment, subscribe. If you've got questions on my tools, what I use, how I like them, uh, if there are tools that you have and want to share it with the channel, post it in the comments below. Let us know what you have, things that you find indispensable. Uh, let us know. But otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next week.